leaders in the Southern Baptist Convention, or Baptist Baptist Church that is, are trying to confront sexual abuse that happens in the church. Their national convention in Dallas just started today. Good evening, I'm Josh Rowe. And I'm Latricia Thomas. Kylie Thomas shares a Georgia woman's story who was sexually abused as a teenager by her pastors. She explains the reality of sexual abuse of children in the church. Kylie. Right now, pastors, therapists, and victims are all meeting at the National Southern Baptist Conference to talk about how they can make their churches safer. Now, I spoke to one victim of sexual abuse as a child, and she tells me she thinks churches are taking the problem seriously, but there's more work to be done. Growing up in a Southern Baptist church in Birmingham, Susan Cadoni trusted she was safe, but the very place she turned for comfort is where she was sexually abused. No one in my little town who would have believed that not just my youth minister, but when I went to my pastor for help, you know, for him to, to abuse me as well, there's no one who would have believed that. And so I, really, I truly did not have any resources. Susan says her youth minister and pastor sexually abused her when she was 14, 15, and 16 years old. She didn't have a trusted adult that could step in and intervene, so she suffered in silence. Well, I can tell you this, I didn't report because I thought it was my fault. That's what they had told me, and I believe that. That silence broke when Susan hit her 20s. She wanted to make sure no child went through what she did. Now Susan is teaching faith leaders how to prevent sexual, physical, and emotional abuse in churches. There is no need to hurt. We want to be there to help you. An approach that Pastor Kenneth Ware already takes at the New Shoulder Avenue Baptist Church in Chattanooga. His church, along with 100 more in the city, work closely with the Southern Baptist Convention to make sure they're equipped to help abuse survivors. They are quick to bring up core issues and let's deal with it, let's talk about it, you know. And that's what I like about it. A leader with the convention told us back in February that there is not a database for people to identify alleged abusers within the church. Now, decades later, Susan is still healing, but she's willing to relive the pain by speaking at the annual church conference today making sure history doesn't repeat itself. If you would like more resources for your church for abuse prevention and intervention, you can access that free curriculum online. We put instructions on how to do so at newschannel9.com. Reporting in Chattanooga, I'm Kylie Thomas. In February, we told you a Houston newspaper discovered more than 250 key church leaders convicted of sex abuse crimes. We found 30 in Tennessee and Georgia combined. Susan says nothing ever happened to the two pastors who abused her.